that. You were charged with the courier's murder and kidnapping and carjacking. We, we believe there's federal ju jurisdiction for that. Okay, so let's talk. Let's keep it in the context of the courier's okay, and right. other and other crimes that you that you okay. committed. All right, just so right. we're clear, because we, we don't want to do anything to interfere with your rights. And, and just so you know, I want to make sure your rights are protected. Okay. My rights are fine. No worries. I understand my rights, and I I do know the Constitution, and I do know all the rights that are attached to it, even for people right. like me. So okay. I don't, I, you know, I, I appreciate that you are very concerned about my rights, but I'm not an ignorant person. I do know what they are and I know, and, and I'm telling you that's, I have very specific reasons for wanting what I want. And it, as extreme as it may seem to some people, it really is not that extreme to me because just because of my outlook on things and it's a personal opinion that I have of the way things are and it's not going to change. And I know, as soon as I, you know, started talking to you, I knew I was never getting out. So, I mean, for me, that is the death penalty. Because I'm not Bubba from the Sticks who sat in one town for all my life, and I can't be satisfied sitting in prison for all my life. I've been lots of places, I've done lots of things, and sitting in prison for the rest of my life is a death penalty. Same thing to me. I'd rather go out while I still have some sanity and <coughs> good memories. <laughs> That's where I'm coming from. So, I mean, I want to discuss the bottom line, too. If we're talking about, we can talk about the couriers, hypothetically. That's not the way it's going to go. But, I mean, that's we can talk about that. So, hypothetically, um, I give you all the details. Um, like I say, they're not really going to find a lot of evidence, but I can, I'm sure I can give you enough. It's, you know, whether it be through my motivations and, and you know, like the way they died, you know, you're going to have some evidence to corroborate what I tell you. Um, the rest of it, you know, is just going to be my story because, I mean, if the house is gone, there's not, you know. Right. So, I mean, yeah, based on that alone, uh, from my understanding of the guidelines, I qualify for the death penalty on that case alone. Well, let me, let I mean, me. I could be wrong, but I don't. I, I don't see why not. I don't know. I mean, if I don't, I don't know who does. Let me put it that way. And that's what you told us last time, right? So one of the things we need to talk about is getting some of some of that information so that we can know some of the details. To move right, but I can't give you any more details on that because that's not going to be the case. Well, what, well let me tell you about what. I uh, know it's not. If I have anything to say okay. or about it, it won't be. The couriers won't be the case. No. Um, well, let me tell you what the U.S. Attorney's Office in Vermont has said. Okay, they they've told us that um, they are okay with us proceeding here in Alaska on that case. Okay. There are, there would be other things that would need to be done to confirm and finalize that, but that's what their office has told us. Right. Does that help you? No, uh, it's irrelevant to me. Because, I mean, if I have my way, then that case is never even going to go to court. It will be a moot point. I mean, they'll, they'll know for sure that I did it, and, you know, whatever. Maybe there will be a hearing or whatever. I don't know how it works, but I don't see any reason why I will be punished for that. If I'm already getting the maximum punishment for But let me, let me tell you about the death penalty factors because I think maybe that'll help you understand why we're asking what we're asking and why we're okay. telling you things. Um, under the law, um, the court must consider aggravating factors. What aggravating factors? And one of the first aggravating factors, as you can imagine, or one of the major ones is um, other people that, that, that the defendant has killed, other murders. That is one of the biggest factors considered, as you would, might imagine. Right. So that's why we're asking you about um, if well, I'm not asking you, but I need you to know that. So if we're talking about the couriers and, and you've killed other people, the judge needs to know that. And not only, not only does he need to know that, law enforcement has an obligation to find that out. So they can't proceed without knowing other details. If they suspect that there's other bodies, they're gonna. They have no to reason to suspect it. that. Well, I think what what you what you would probably imagine is that other agencies throughout the country are thinking, you know, this missing person, that missing person. Well, that's their prerogative. 
I'm not gonna. I already said I'm not gonna say anything that's gonna incriminate me and in anything that they think I may have done. Mm -hmm. um, not unless I get what I want. Right. Well, let's talk about how how we can get what you want while still getting the information that a judge or a jury or the capital crimes people are going to need. Well, no, I mean, to me, it's it's one before the other. I get my execution date, and then you, you know, all cooperate, as long as it's irrevocable or whatever. Well, let me, I told you, I want, want to tell you more about what the capital crimes folks told us. And they said that the 12 months, even if a person volunteers for the death penalty, which is what, that, that was their term, somebody who wants the death penalty, the 12 months wasn't realistic. I don't decide that. I'm just, I want you to have full information. Their call. Well, I guess what I'm saying is it's not really, it, they, they aren't going to try to slow anything down for you. No one, no one Well, here. look, if it takes a year, just, you know, if it takes, if it's that much paperwork, then the federal government needs to discover email because there is no way it should take a year, regardless of how many people you have to talk to or how much paperwork you have to file, should not take a year. It and it's not us holding this up. I'm not it's saying not it is you. I'm I'm talking to the federal government right now. If that really takes them that long, then maybe they need to reevaluate their. You know, like like I say, I can understand why it takes so long. In most cases, this is not going to be a standard case. This is not. And like I said, as far as I'm concerned, I'm trying to do everything to move things along as quickly as possible. And um, you know. To me, that should just make it easy for them. Piece of cake. Just cross all the T's, dot all the I's, do the paperwork. You know. Right. I don't really, I don't really understand what the, you know, what the, the possible um, factors could be that would make it take more than a year. I don't get that at all. I built houses in a year. Right. But you're, but you are. You're obviously a smart guy, and you, you can understand that the people in the federal government are not the only ones involved. There are courts involved. Um, you said, you know, is there appeal rights? Well, you know, there may be other people out there who are who are against the death penalty. You, you know that, right? Right, you know, like human are, rights. I understand that. Special you know that. interest groups. I don't, you know, none of that is relevant, though, because at once I'm deemed to be competent to make my own decisions for my own fate, then... They're not. They're no more entitled to make those decisions for me than the government is to make the decision that I deserve the death penalty without right to appeal. It's the same. To me, it's the same thing. I don't. You, you, know. you believe that. People in this room may believe that, but we. I just told you when I came in. I'm going to give you the information that I have. I'm not going to. I'm not going to um, try to tell you something that's not true. I want you to just have that information so we can work together to see if there's different things that can be done. Yeah, that I mean, it sounds like it's out of your hands, though, because if they're saying there's no way it's going to happen, then that pretty much shut down your whole thing right there. Well, what they said is, they said to me, you need to be realistic about how the process works. For example, competency. You mentioned competency. If we charge you with the couriers, um, carjacking, you don't need to charge me with that. Let me just use that as an example. Right. Is that okay? That's fine. I'm just saying that there's things we could be doing right now as far as, you know, like the competency issue. There's things that you could schedule psych evals right now. You don't have to wait till I'm charged. If you right. have if it we, on paper if we, and you if, say it was done on this date and he passed all these psychiatric evaluations, well, will you agree then to do you that? have it. Of well, course. I'll agree to do anything. Okay, but again, in connection, I'm going I'm to use the couriers because that's the crime that I'm talking to you about now. Right. right. If, if, if we can arrange to have someone come in and give you, meet with you for a series of days or whatever long it takes to do this psych eval, right. will you agree to do that? Of course. 